The Mrs. Murphy exemption provides that owner-occupied homes with four or fewer rental units are exempt from certain aspects of the Fair Housing Act. This exemption allows property owners to discriminate against certain groups when looking for tenants, and you must be aware of this for your real estate exam. Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com, and today we're talking about the Mrs. Murphy exemption. Let's get started. Now, before we explain the Mrs. Murphy exemption, we must be familiar with the Fair Housing Act. So just a quick recap. The Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination against protected classes in real estate. Now, there are seven protected classes, race, color, religion, uh, sex, familiar status, and disabilities. Now, while the Fair Housing Act protects these groups, exceptions exist, such as the Mrs. Murphy exemption. Now, what is the Mrs. Murphy exemption? What is this specifically? Well, the Mrs. Murphy exemption states that if an owner-occupied dwelling has four or fewer rental units, it is exempt from the Fair Housing Act. This means if a property owner lives in a home with three other rented rooms, they can technically discriminate against protected classes, certain protected classes, I should say, but more on that later. So how did this come into play? Well, let us introduce you to Mrs. Murphy, a hypothetical elderly woman and property owner. Senator Aiken created the imaginary Mrs. Murphy in 1964 to exemplify why the Fair Housing Act should have exemptions. The hypothetical Mrs. Murphy, set in her ways of bigotry, runs a small bed and breakfast to help pay the bills. She worries that her white guests may not like sharing space with racial minorities, so she only chooses tenants who are white. The senator argued that because Mrs. Murphy lives in a property with only four rental units, she should be able to choose whom she rents out rooms to. As a result of this argument, the Mrs. Murphy exemption was put into law under Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So that was obviously back then. How does it work now? Now, the Mrs. Murphy exemption works differently now than it did in 1964. For example, Mrs. Murphy's of the world can no longer discriminate based on race because the Civil Rights Act strictly forbids it. However, property owners who fall under the exemption could technically still discriminate based on sex, religion, familiar status, and disabilities. If Mrs. Murphy prefers renting to female tenants or fellow widows to support her limited income, this exemption gives her the right to turn down other applicants. If you think this exemption sounds problematic, you're not alone. Many fair housing groups have called for its repeal. These organizations argue that Mrs. Murphy exemption encourages housing discrimination by denying equal opportunities to protected classes. Now, it's important to note some states have systems that limit or completely override this discriminatory loophole. We actually have a list of which states recognize the Mrs. Murphy exemption, and I'll leave a link down below of that. Now, it's important to note that this exemption does not apply to advertising. For example, Mrs. Murphy cannot run a rental advertisement stating that certain religious groups uh, should not apply. She also cannot tell prospective renters why they are being denied. She must deny their tenancy without explaining her reasoning. Now, this exemption also does not apply in cases where a real estate agent represents Mrs. Murphy. Real estate professionals must comply with the Federal Fair Housing Act, so they cannot partake in discriminatory behavior. If Mrs. Murphy decided to take up real estate and become a real estate agent, then she can no longer discriminate against tenants in her home based on those uh, specific exemptions. Now, there are other exemptions to the Fair Housing Act, and don't worry, we'll be covering them on this channel. So what do you need to know for the real estate exam? Well, the Mrs. Murphy exemption states that if an owner-occupied dwelling has four or fewer rental units, it is exempt from certain aspects of the Fair Housing Act. This means that if a property owner lives in a home with three other rented rooms, they can technically discriminate against certain protected classes. This legal loophole is extremely controversial and is considered to many a weak spot in the Fair Housing Act. And yes, guys, this will show up on the real estate exam, so it's super important to know. For more on fair housing, click the video here and click here to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, see ya. Bye.